This focuses on some of the basic principles of propositional logic or first order logic. And we're talking about the logic of conditional sentences in particular. And a conditional sentence is a compound sentence. That is, a compound sentence is one that contains another sentence as one of its parts. And with conditional sentences, they actually have two sentences for both parts of the conditional statement. So conditionals are if-then claims. So these are composed of the antecedent, that would be what follows the if portion of the statement, and the consequent, that which follows the then portion of the statement. So material conditionals are truth functional. So when we're doing logic and we're talking about material conditionals, these are truth functionals. These are not causal claims. If one thing happens that will cause another thing to happen, rather when they are truth functional, that means the truth or falsity of the compound sentence, the material conditional as a whole is truth functional. That means it's a function of the truth of its component sentences. It's directly related, an output of the truth value of the component sentences. And a mater material conditional is false in only one condition. And that is when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So if I say, if I am a professor, then I am extremely rich, we have a true antecedent and a false consequent, and that material conditional that I just stated is false. In the other cases, when, when one is true and the second is true, when they're both false, or even when the antecedent is false and the consequent is true, those are all circumstances in which the material conditional as a whole is true. Now, there are some odd features of this. Uh, one is when you have that false antecedent and false consequent. So late in Michael Jordan's career, he had retired for the second time, and there were rumors going around that he was going to come back and play. And Rick Riley was a Sports Illustrated author who interviewed Charles Barkley. And so there was some consideration that Barkley might come out of retirement and play. And Barkley said it would take extraordinary circumstances. And then Riley said this, if Jordan is an extraordinary, then Madonna is a nun. Now, the idea here is that what he stated, we have a conditional claim that's true. What he stated is true because it's false that Jordan is not extraordinary, right? Jordan is extraordinary. And of course, it's false that Madonna, the pop star, is a nun. And so we, he has ultimately said something true by having a material conditional with a false antecedent and a false consequent. All right, material conditionals in standard form. We make use of these terms, sufficient conditions and necessary conditions. So we wanna make sure how they fit when we're talking about material conditions. So we say P is sufficient for Q, and that means that when P is true, then Q is true. And so when you have P, then you have Q. P is a sufficient condition for Q. So for example, if P is the statement, Nadab has a driver's license, and Q is the statement, Nadab, Nadab is eligible to drive, then you have a material conditional where P is sufficient for Q. So the material conditional that expresses this fact that Nadab's having a driver's license is sufficient for him being eligible to drive, is if P, then Q. That's when P is a sufficient condition for Q. All right, necessary conditions go the other direction if you like. P is necessary for Q, means that when Q is true, then P is true. 
So P has to be the case, it's necessary, when Q is true. And again, P and Q stands for sentences. So uh, let's have P be Nadab is at least 16 years old and Q, Nadab is eligible to drive. Now, in this case, the material conditionals that expresses this fact that Nadab's being at least 16 year, years old is necessary for her being eligible to drive is if Q, then P. Right? If Q is true that Nadab is eligible to drive, then it's true that Nadab is at least 16 years old. Okay, one more thing about necessary conditions. The necessary condition is the consequent in a conditional standard form, right? In a conditional statement where you have a standard form, the necessary condition for P, the first statement, is showing up in the consequent. So that's what's preceded by then. So the necessary condition of a conditional sentence may also be preceded by the phrase only if. So you don't have to use this phrase if then. You could use when then, or you could have the initial statement and then the phrase only if, and then the second statement. Now, in that case, it would be the second statement that would be necessary for the first statement. So, for example, Nadab is eligible to drive only if, at this time, I guess, Nadab's a he. Nadab was a she, wasn't she? Anyway, only if uh, he is at least 16 years old. So, uh, the only if expresses right comes right before the necessary condition. Right? So you can use the only if to express a material conditional. And when you do so, one way of thinking about this is you could put the if in front of the sentence, if Nadab is eligible to drive, and then you could change the only if to a then. Then he is at least 16 years old, right? And then then precedes the necessary condition. So be, we be wary of material conditionals that can be expressed in other ways. We say it is expressed in a standard form when we have the if-then form. And so we want to make sure when we're doing propositional logic that we convert any material claim, any material conditional claim that is, into a standard form statement. And that makes it easier also to identify what's a sufficient condition and what is a necessary condition. Okay, back to sufficient conditions, right? The sufficient condition now then is going to be the antecedent of a conditional that is put in standard form. So the phrase provided that is another way of doing this. The phase, the, that phrase precedes the sufficient condition. So often you might have the necessary condition stated first and then provided that, and then you have the sufficient condition following. Now, in those cases, the provided that, you are going to have that include the phrase provided that, you're going to have to switch the order because the provided that comes before the sufficient condition. If you're going to put it in standard form into an if-then form, well, you need to do that. So, uh, we will have a exam provided that we had class the day before. That means if we had class the day before, then we will have an exam. So also you might find phrases like in case and in case of that precede a sufficient condition. So you need to watch for these kinds of phrases and you need to learn how to translate, so to speak, to put them into standard form, into that if then form so that you can evaluate a, an argument that uses a conditional sentence. So these are building blocks for evaluating arguments that obviously is extremely important.